Hello, so in this problem we're going to sketch a polar curve uh, is 2 minus 2 cos theta and when it, they ask us to sketch it they really mean to sketch it in the xy plane. And I'm then going to find, although it wasn't actually asked in the question, I'm going to find the derivative of the dy dx of this polar curve at theta is pi on 2. And that may help us give us some useful information about the curve itself in fact. Now there are many ways people do this. Some people do this by making up a table of values of r and theta and that's okay. I like to give a rough um, sketch of what this looks like firstly in the r theta plane. So in the r theta plane I'm thinking of um, I firstly think well what cos looks like this so the cosine would normally start at 1 and go like this the minus is going to turn it upside down the 2 stretches it and, and then I'm going to move it 2 units up so you ought to be okay at drawing these things just as a quick check when theta is 0 the cos of naught is 1 so that starts at 0 at pi it's up at height of 4 at pi on 2 it's up a height of there and so on there's the rough sketch of what it looks like now I find that useful in drawing I'm going to try and translate this picture across into the xy plane by just remembering that the r values the r is the distance out from the origin and the r values here have various different heights and the heights here correspond to how far out from the origin you go so as I move along the theta axis here over here I'm rotating around and as I move upwards in these heights then I'm moving outwards from the origin and so I use that idea to help me sketch it so when theta is 0 I'm at 0 so the, it starts off this curve at the origin there and you can see here that as I move towards pi on 2 then the r values are going from 0 out to 2 so that is as I rotate around here the r values are going out to a distance of 2 and so I imagine these little radii here these correspond to the heights here as I move around as I move around to pi that is as I rotate around there now the r value goes all the way up to 4 but of course at pi this is going to be 4 units out from the origin so this will be the point minus 4 on the x-axis so around it comes to here like this and now I just look back at this and say look the whole thing is symmetric about pi so that means it's going to do exactly the same thing as I move around to 2 pi so by the symmetry it's going to come around here it'll have to go through the point minus 2 there and then it's going to come back into there try and make it a little bit smoother there and so I get a curve something like this by the way you can also check the symmetry around the x-axis notice because if you replace theta with minus theta because cos is an even function doesn't do anything so replacing theta with minus theta in the equation doesn't change the equation and that tells me it's going to be symmetric about the x-axis okay well that's the sketch of it in the xy plane if you turn it around a little bit it looks like a heart and it's sometimes called uh, a cardioid or some word like that for um, meaning a heart shaped object now the next bit I'm going to press on with this a little bit I want to find the derivative of this at the point pi on 2 it's not, not completely clear what's happening at pi on 2 um, the gradient may be zero or it may not be and I'd like to calculate what the gradient is at that at those particular points at uh, theta is pi on 2 it'll be the same at 3 pi on 2 now to work out dy dx is a little bit more complicated and I have to remind myself what the polar coordinates are so the connection between the Cartesian and the polar coordinates are given by x as r cos theta y is r sine theta which you see by simple geometry and I know the value of r for this particular curve 
So I can replace um, r with 2 minus 2 cos theta and that'll give me um, 2 minus 2 cos theta times cos theta and this one I can do the same. So I get 2 minus 2 cos theta multiplied by sine theta. And so I now get expressions for x and y in terms of theta. You can think of these as parametric equations now. And so I want to work out dy dx, I'm going to work out dy d theta divided by dx d theta. You could expand this out and differentiate it, or you can just use the product rule. I think I'll just use the product rule. So I'm going to write down then dx d theta. So product rule says you copy the first, differentiate the second. So I'll get minus 2 minus 2 cos theta times sine theta. And then you copy the second, differentiate the first. So that will give me plus 2 sine theta cos theta. So there's the derivative. I'm going to calculate that at, because I'm interested in what's happening at pi on 2, I might calculate that at pi on 2. And at pi on 2 then, cos of 90 is 0, so that term goes completely. That's 0. Sine of 90 is 1, so I'm just going to get minus 2 at theta equals to pi on 2. Now I'm going to do a similar thing for the... Um, the uh, variable y, so dy d theta, I differentiate this again, you could expand it out and do that, that way, or use the product rule, which I think I'll use again here. So I get 2 minus cos theta times the derivative of sine is cos. So now copy the first, differentiate the second, so I get plus 2 sine theta times sine theta is sine squared theta. Now when I put um, pi on 2 in, then this term will all be 0, and this is going to give me 2. So this is 2 at theta equals pi on 2. So at theta equals pi on 2, dy dx is going to be dy d theta, which is 2, divided by dx d theta, which is minus 2, which is minus 1 which means that my rough sketch is probably not as neat as it ought to have been. It tells me the gradient at this point is minus 1. So if I were to draw a tangent line through here, then the gradient of that line is minus 1. So it's parallel to the line y equals minus x. And you could calculate a similar thing the other side. You should find the gradients plus 1. If you're just asked to sketch a curve, then you don't need to do all this harder analysis unless you really want to know in detail what's happening. You simply stop at that point and draw the sketch. But sometimes if you want to see exactly what's happening at various points on the curve, then you can analyse that further by calculating the derivative. Might just finish this by noting that, see what happens to this when uh, at this point over here at pi. You see at pi, the curve is coming in and turning around. So if you imagine drawing a, some sort of tangent line there, you'd expect the gradient of the tangent might be infinite. And you can, you can see that happening, happening in the algebra here. If you put theta as pi into, the, um, into d, dx d theta, then this is all zero. If you put theta's pi into there, well, you don't get zero. In fact, you get uh, some number, minus four or something. So when you divide the two, you'll be dividing essentially by zero, and so the gradient then is going to become infinite at that point, which makes sense in the picture, because you can see at that point the gradient's going to be undefined. Mm -hmm.